Hey boys, this is Ryguy Gaming here today, and today we are doing a tutorial that was suggested by Dragon Slayer 1919. And I haven't announced who recommends the tutorials for a while, so I think I'm going to start doing that again. I'm sorry I kind of stepped away from that. If you announced a tutorial and I didn't give you credit, er, announced. If you suggested a tutorial and I didn't give you credit, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to start doing that again. So make sure you suggest a tutorial, tutorial and I'll give you a shout out. But yes, today's suggestion comes from Dragon Slayer 1919 or I guess he has an alt account, godly like power. Um, but anyways, his suggestion is he would like to have a door or some kind of um, barrier that is like legitimately an owner only door. So um, you, if you notice, if you've watched a lot of my other tutorials where we do owner only like doors, the problem with them is a lot of the time they why be player two there we go a lot of the times is if a player is like hugging you from behind they can like sneak in right behind you and that's kind of annoying and so today i'm going to show you a way around that actually using filtering enabled so today filtering enabled is actually helpful instead of a hindrance um, and this will not work without it so if you don't have filtering enabled and you don't want it, I'm sorry, this won't work for you because we need the clients to be separate from the server for this to work. But anyways, as you can see here, player two does not have access to this door, so he can't pass through it. Now, inside of the script for the door, let me just show you really quick so that you believe this. I have it set up so that as soon as the pl correct player touches the door, it will its can collide will be set to false, and so it will be pass throughable indefinitely. And so now I will turn into player one, and as we can see, when I hit the door after a little bit of a buffer, he's able to pass through it indefinitely. It never goes solid again because I commented out the wait time, and he can dance around in here and. I'll even like sit him in the middle here and show you guys this. Now, if I come back over here to player two and I try to go through, what? Uh oh, player two can't get through the door no matter what he does. He can jump on it, he can touch player one, but he's not whitelisted. So he cannot get through this door no matter how hard he tries unless the owner has their place without filtering enabled. So the moral of this story is Make sure you turn on filtering enabled. <laughs> Just kidding. So I'm going to close out all that and we're going to look at the scripts behind this. So the way this works is it uses the fact that whenever a client manipulates an object in workspace, only the client will be able to tell the difference between what was manipulated. So. The first thing we did is we made our door and then inside of it we created a script that handles the um, like seeing who's allowed to pass through it and so let's go through that now. So the first thing we do is we get the replicated storage which is where we store our events and I don't if you've seen my other tutorial you'll notice that I'm reusing an old event that's just because I was too lazy to type out a new one. Um, if you look over here where my mouse is and my replicated storage, um, you can see that I have all these other ones stored away. So really you should only have one remote event in use for like one function or like one operation. But since I don't have anything else using this one because that other tutorial is in storage, um, I'm just reusing this one because I was basically just too lazy to make a new one. So don't worry about it. Um, and then I have a, what are they called in Lua? <laughs> um, array maybe? I don't know. Every language has a different thing. Like Python calls them lists. I'd call this an array. Um, I think Lua's are called arrays. So here I have an array of whitelisted players. Now it doesn't have to be like this. You could have like an owner value if you were doing a tycoon. So if you don't know how to do that, just go check out the owner only door we did for the tycoon. Um, 
and you'll see how to like set up a string value with the owner name and everything and so basically you'll just replace this line with the owner value and then we just have a debounce so they can't spam the button and send like a billion requests to the client um, which actually it won't do so maybe we don't even need the debounce but that doesn't matter um, so next the script dot parent is the door so whenever it's touched this is our on touched event handler or whatever you want to call it um, we say if not debounce so this just handles it getting pressed more than one as you can see we can only press it once for a second because it will check to see if debounce is false and if it is then it will go in and do all this but if it isn't it will just cut to the end um, so as soon as we get in here we set the debounce to true and then after one second because all this stuff takes like no time at all so you have to wait one second and then set the debounce back to false but anyways so then we get the character I just called it the character it might not always be the character but that's just what I called it is the parent of the part that hit the door and then if that if the parent exists so if it isn't just a random part then we'll come into here and we'll say we'll look for the humanoid and if that exists <laughs> you have to do a lot of checks so that you don't break the script and then these this next line found equals fault and then these two lines are where I look for the name of the player in the allowed players list and I kind of wrote this all on one line just to show you that it's kind of cool in Lua because you can write stuff on one line but if I was to spread this out it would probably look more like this and it would probably be better to do it like this for this video um, just so it's a little more easier to see. I just wanted to show you that Lua is really cool like that and you can put stuff on one line. Like I would probably put this if if statement on one line since it's just like one thing that happens. But anyway, so this is a for loop here and I haven't gone over loops yet in my um, Lua tutorials but basically what this does is it takes that allowed players array or table or whatever you want to call it up here this is and it will check every value in here and it will basically just compare the name of the model of whatever holds the part and the item in the list so it will say like let's say I touch the door it will come in here and it will say oh so item will now be like um, Rai123 because that's the first item in the array and then it will say is char.name equal to item and then it will say yes it is so then it will say found.true and if player one was the one that touched it it will get the first item it will say is char.name equal to the first item which is Rai123 and it will say no because item because char.name is player one not Rai123 so then it will go back around and it will do the second item it will say is char.name equal to player one and it will say oh yes so then it will set found equal to true and at the end of this loop down here if found then this is when we fire over to the client and we tell him to make the door go throughable. Um, avoid collisions? I don't know. <laughs> um, so it, we say if found, then we fire the event or we fire client on the event and we pass in the player. So I actually got kind of hung up here. I was just doing char.name but you have to actually pass in the player object. So you have to do game.players, um, find first child, and then use the character's name. You could use get player from character, but I just do it this way, um, just cause. And then I also pass in the parent of the script, which is the door. And then let's hop over to the local script, which I have placed inside of the starter player and it's inside of starter player scripts and this puts this script right inside of the player object so it makes it 
really handy for doing scripts that aren't technically a GUI but you still want to happen on the client side and so we get the replicated storage we get the open closed door event and then we set up our event listener and so we say event dot on client event connect and then we set up a new function and we create a formal parameter called door um, which again holds the script dot parent which is the door in workspace and then we set the doors can collide property to false and if you want you can have it close or you can just not do this and it will remain open indefinitely it doesn't really matter since they're the only player that can pass through it but if you've noticed if we have a player that isn't on this list and they come along and hit the door this found value will never equal true and so it will never fire to their client which will mean that this door is never um, go throughable to them so they will never be able to pass through it even though other players will be and so that's just kind of a way you can exploit filtering enabled to not exploit but use it to help you out when you want one player to be able to do something but you don't want other players to be able to and so um, I hope you found this helpful. There are, just in case before you start mentioning in the comments, there are multiple ways to do this. This is just the way I'm doing it. I know there's probably quicker ways. This is just the way I threw together. Um, after another way I tried didn't work, but this works just fine. Like you won't get any lag or anything. So um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please post a comment down below with any suggestions you might have for future tutorials or if you have any problems I'd love to help you. Just be sure to post the output. So as you can see here I have an error right here. Um, so this is what you would post because this is what helps me know what happened. Um, because it has like the line and it has the error message so that would really help if you guys do have an error and also don't for if you haven't yet don't forget to subscribe so you can see future roblox tutorials and make your place that little bit better and a little bit less of free models because <laughs> we all know that can be kind of cancerous sometimes especially when they have those replication viruses are those still a thing? I don't know. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you all have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.